another installment of Mom and I, the Best Buzz Podcast. Uh, today, uh, I'm just going to have an easy day. We ain't going to go through a lot. We're just going to talk about some of the top headlines that you actually see in what I call entertainment. Anything that you can click on is entertainment these days, so... Might as well just jump into it. One of the top headlines of today is the Trump sneakers. And uh, before we go any further, we do have Mother here with us. She's quiet today, but I still drug her into it somehow. So how you doing, Mom? I'm doing great. Hello, everyone. Glad to be here. Yep, we are glad to present you another show. But as I was saying, the Trump sneakers have come out. We should call them the Trump Air Force Ones. No, I kid. But uh, the gold sneakers, you know, he is the first president to launch a sneaker line. I mean, that's, to me, kind of kind of fire in a way. I mean, I don't really know what to say. Like, I, I ain't going to really destroy the shoes because they look a little little hot to me. They some something Flavor Flav might have wore back in the day. With this big uh, clock and all of that, but some gold kicks, a rapper uh, shoe definitely because they made it all gold. So no, I kid, but they remind you of the baby shoes too. Remember how people used to get the baby shoes bronzed? Oh yes. <laughs> oh, I can say for four hundred dollars, they better be gold. Oh, <laughs> yeah. You said some real gold, huh? That's right. Some real gold, not something sprayed on. Now, what do you think about the shoes? I think the shoes, since they have the American flag and that, and of course, to me, their gear, even though I know that they're expensive or whatever, but we know that most people who wear a gym shoe like that, it, it, you know, is our black people. <laughs> and I don't mean that even in the, you know, that we love, we love our gym shoes. Yes. So I think in some ways, even with him, maybe he's trying to market too because of all that with the flag. Yes. Where it might be black people wearing those shoes, where they <laughs> are embracing the flag. And don't get me wrong, I have nothing against the flag because my father actually was a veteran. Yeah, thank you for his service. So I, I oh, you're welcome. You know? <laughs> but so I have nothing against the flag. I actually honor the flag as far as for the veterans. Yes. I'll say that. So it's nothing like that, but I do think that. At the time when a knee was taken for police brutality and that, I me. think that was was the right thing to do to get people's attention. Yes, and I'd like to add on to what the flag, I, I think if we look at the history of what black America is, and I say even the original Afro-Americans who we descend from, the flag in the military meant more to us than I'd say whether you look at the, the parties, Democrat and Republican, because I think a lot of people don't know about the Constitution Acts. Those are the things where the army took up to free us before you might as well say either party would. So I do agree with that. that uh, don't get it misconstrued that black people don't like the flag or something like that because of how they can politicize it and make it seem like, well, since he kneeled, he's not for the flag. No, if the freedom for us means the flag. So, and when I look at my mother, who's my, uh, the daughter of my grandfather, who she spoke of, that's just really showing that our people have always fought for the flag, whether if the flag honored us or not. But I'd say in this new day and time, like you said, with the shoes, he's definitely aiming to get more of a, a flag presence because of the shoes I actually do have the flag on it. And I'm not going to hate. The shoe is pretty design is is fashionable yeah, I, you know I, I say that too and i also say one thing about trump i'm not whether you're for trump or against trump i'm not you know trump loves america and those shoes actually is telling you his love for america <laughs> yes now one thing that i do have to say that i will get off of this when you were talking about the people who serve in the military black white Hispanic, no matter who, what color you are, if you're serving for our country, if you're fighting for our country, you should be honored. Yes. But the thing about it is most of the people that we see that go over there and serve, they're not treated fairly. When they come back here, you see them out on the street holding up a sign. Yes. Those are the people who should be taken care of first. 
So if we get it wrong, we're more worried about the flag than we are the people who's fighting for the flag. Yes, I agree. I agree. There's too many homeless veterans, veterans with illnesses that can't get treated. So, like I, I often say, if we got money to send this aid to other countries, we got money to fund a, a veteran affairs fund for our veterans who go out here and fight. So, yes. Now, surrounding the dopeness of the Trump sneakers, we do have a, a few headlines that kind of made me, I'd say, scratch my head. So I have one where it's saying a guy paid $9,000 for the Trump sneakers that are sold out per the GQ magazine. $9,000? Woo, how many pairs is that? <laughs> just uh, 9000 I'm just saying, maybe somebody auctioned it. You know how it is. They probably bought them and claiming they got them on eBay. But I had also saw that the shoes aren't supposed to be produced until like July, though. I wonder if... Uh -uh. If, so, if there could be a limited amount and people more worried about the stock. Oh, no, it is. It was, I believe, a thousand shoes were created. Mm -hmm. That's the, you know, the most. Is. So people know it's going to be valuable with, with Trump. Yes. Because, uh, like I said, I believe they're not supposed to even start being issued out to, like, J July, if I'm not wrong. Like, I, I could be. Don't don't quote me. But, yep. Well, that's part they're Yep, they're supposed to start in July 2024, the gold high tops. And then he also has a white and red knit shoe that's expected to ship in August 2024. So. Okay, now one thing I see on here, where it's under this wealth thing on uh, Instagram, it says the sneakers along with other merchandise including cologne and perfume. Yes are marketed under CIC Ventures LLC using Trump's name and likeness under license, non, not manufactured directly by Trump or the Trump organization. Yes. Even though that right there could be saying that because of all his legal stuff right now, they're just making sure that nobody can take them. Yes. <laughs> now, I see a, another company, which is Louis Vuitton, or Louis Vuitton, they are, I'd say, in a way, looking to possibly take out lawsuits because they claim that the red uh, sole on the bottom is a trademark of their company. And that comes per the Salon magazine. So, <laughs> uh, so everybody's already looking. They already got their wolf teeth out, right, uh, ready for his shoe to drop, so they can. Yeah, but it's not even gonna stand up. I, you know, I agree with you. So, yeah, so other shoes that have red bottoms. Well, you know, that's why I said everyone's ready with the wolf teeth out, ready to <laughs> to come and bite down. Now, my, my thing, I wonder, is the sneaker line meant for presidential promotion, or do you think it's meant for personal use? I think that he's trying to branch out. Hey, sometimes, even with all this real estate stuff, he said, hey, you know, there's money in the, if he gets more into the sports stuff or whatever, because he knows that that shoe... Because I, I just look at the timing of the shoe and then him fighting a $450 million fraud case in New York. Then the shoes come, you know, hit sneaker con two days later. I'm just I'm just looking at the speculation surrounding the shoes, if I, you know, if that's the right way, I should say. But that's the, to me, what I'm asking, even when I say presidential promotion, I don't mean for his campaign, his funds, like I'm, I have two basically separate questions I'm asking, like, is he doing this to, to gather? Pay that or? Yes. Mm -hmm. I understand what you're saying. Because that... me, when I say presidential promotion, just in my opinion, I believe that the shoes are a market to like even younger Right. Voters, that's what know. that's what I believe too. And I believe that they're gonna look at <laughs> Biden and him as far as you know, when people keep talking about Biden forgetting everything and this and that and they're gonna look at Trump as more of the, the hip yeah. the cool the cool president compared to Biden. I mean, cause <sighs> although I know people are sentimental about Biden and certain things, but this right here does. I'm with you. It, it speaks volumes just on. Like now, if he came out with a New Balance shoe, I'd be like, oh, he's for the older people. But with that shoe, mm -hmm. the way it looks, you could be a skateboarder. You could be 
you know, a hip hop or a shoe kind of sore, sneaker kind of sore. I mean, you could do rock and roll because I see all type of different high top shoes, you know, throughout the market, like Vans and all of that. So mm -hmm. I just do. I think it's a, a shoe to me, in my opinion, it looks it, it has the look of a younger generation. Like it doesn't really have the look of overalls with them shoes or. No, and one thing about it, too, where there's demand for it to sell out as fast as it is. Yes. Don't be surprised that if they come out with more shoes, they're going to be higher than $399. Oh, no, I agree. Well, I agree. You know, it's like how they said, supply and demand. So, and then when you get, get the curve, when the demand is higher, but it's limited. <laughs> so, you know. All right. And prices will go up, as you said. Mm -hmm. So Now, my second half of the question was the personal uses. Because we always hear about them coming after him for his campaign funds, claiming that he's using the campaign funds for that. And then, of course, I, as I said, another article said that it, he released the shoes two days after he was ordered to pay $450 million in a fraud case. So, you know, like I'm just I'm just reporting what what the headlines are I, I don't have a stake in it to be like oh he should go to jail for me personally i i feel like the man is, is just a regular to me guy you know like how you said just trying to branch out even further so you know some stuff if i told the truth like i'm supposed to i do feel like that it's egregious like the stuff that they you know like i feel like if you wanted him in jail for even the january 6th stuff he would be there but you don't really want him that bad so don't go trying to fog up his campaign now with the you know and even then if he had did something where like i said where they don't want him out then he wouldn't be able to be going around mm -hmm. you know gathering to me or garnering i would say more support and all of that so either let the man run for president and let him do it, you know, like how everybody else is, or just, you know, to me, like, just don't. Like, that's really how I feel. I don't have no, well, according to this cement, nope. I, I just feel like if he's unfit and he shouldn't be on it, y'all should have did something four years ago when, you know, when all of that with the election was was at his height and at his pinnacle to send a message. Don't now wait till he's got major support. Like, when you look at the polls that they put up online, shoot, he's killing it. He got close to 80% of the the vote, you know, as far as for the Republicans. So, so it's, you know, I'm just being, that's just me. Like, don't now try and stifle him with all the Colorado injunctions and all that. Either y'all going to unite as a nation and take him off or just let him do what he's doing. But me, when I look at the sneakers, that's definitely telling younger voters, get out and vote. So... I think that his his total genius was him putting <laughs> coming out with these gym shoes or sneakers, whatever you want to call them. Yes. Him because he not only made history being the first president to do it, but also that if somebody else made them shoes, it probably wouldn't have sold like they're selling. Yes, because we couldn't see no Biden <laughs> sneakers. He really is smart financially, even though some of his stuff is you know crumbling or whatever like that. But to come up with a strategy like that. And know that the president can do it even when no one else can. Because he ain't making no orthopedics with the Velcro mm -hmm. straps. Like, you know how most of the... Right. Because when, <laughs> when you told me that he made some shoes, remember I asked you was the orthopedic. Mm -hmm. You know the ones that you see the old man with the two straps on them? <laughs> like, he, he ain't making none of them. He made you some, some sneakers. You could lace them up. Yeah, and you know what? He made history. He made history... Being the first president to do that. Oh, we got other presidents that made history on stuff that they don't want to be known for. <laughs> but I guarantee you, he don't mind being known for the first president that makes, it makes sneakers. Yes. Oh, definitely. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Does. He got some things that he's been, you know, like, to his criminal stuff that they've been trying to put him, take him through or whatever they, he's made history with. But with the sneaker stuff and that, there's a lot of things that he's done too. The sneakers are genius. Yep, the sneakers I do. They 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 nice looking. So I I will say, shoot, you might have some hot ones right there. I just hope that they come out for the people. Even the guy that spent nine grand on the shoes, I hope they come out so you can get them because that's a steep price, like for some shoes, like. Yeah, and I'm a, I'm a since I'm an oldie here. 
Give me a little fanny pack or a little backpack to go with it. <laughs> no. Or I can carry my stuff in and I can my little shoes will match. Yeah, we're good. You now you looking like the rock on Central yeah, Intelligence. That's all right. I that told you. Pack. Well, somebody on here said that those shoes look like the the eighties Hulk Hogan. But hey, because Hulk Hogan used to have those colors like that. Remember, he used to have like the flag on his. Mm-hmm. He did. He used to come out with it. Mm-hmm. He did. They, but you know, like I said, they are like a, like Biden shoe to me would be an orthopedic. So we already know, like he ain't coming out with no shoes right now. So, yep. Mm-hmm. But I, I in in summation, I would say I think that they're a good looking shoe. I do think that they're meant to promote a, a younger, uh, how would I say, vibe, and even appeal to younger voters. So. Now, do you think they stand up to a Nike? We'll have to see. We'll have to see what they made of when they come out. But if you say them by look right now. Yes, that's mm-hmm. what I mean by look. Do you think they stand up to? They're a little fat farmish. I mean, I, I'm going to hold you up a little, you know. I mean, they, they for $400, I would hope so. i just put it that way. I would hope so. They have a fashionable look, though. I'm not going to hate my other... Stuff I was saying was really just trying to tease on the shoes, but they do. Well, I was teasing too about the fanny pack, but one thing I do have to say is that back in the day when Michael Jordan sold his shoes, he did have a case for him. Can I have a case for him then? Now, hey, maybe, maybe that's something because I mean, how many people probably are going to get the shoes to wear them? You know what right. I'm saying? So you, you might be on the something with that where it's more like memorabilia. So, yep. But that, I mean, that's a good idea. That's a good idea. Maybe uh, if people know, let us know if you if you saw if they come with a case or... Because what would he be, the 47th president? Something like that? So, <laughs> don't get me wrong. I, I believe if he is, he would be... Maybe that's, you know, what what is Biden right now? So... Cause I could be wrong. People are like you, you're putting, you're leaving off a, a president. Uh, I don't know. I'm just really spitballing it here. I believe he'd be the forty seventh. Yeah, cause Biden is the forty sixth. Oh, see, Trump was the forty fifth. Look at me. Mm. I see you. Mm-hmm. Go ahead now with your history. <laughs> No, I just remember your government. Mm-hmm. I just remember when he was in that uh, the thing they was calling him was the forty fifth. So I I just added, you know, Biden is the forty sixth. If he wins, he'd be the forty seventh. So mm-hmm. and he coming with sneakers. So <laughs> if he get in his first day, he need to be wearing his sneakers out there. Yep, yeah, that's true. That's true. So Trump, if you hear us, put them sneakers on when you get inaugurated. Mm-hmm. We want to see them sneakers shining. That's right. Put them up there on the desk, cross your legs, and tell them you're here to do business. <laughs> and, and remember us if you if you hear about this podcast, so that we that since we supporting it, you give us some of them shoes. <laughs> <laughs> yep. And I want mine in the in the case though. Yep, forty seventh. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> but I, I guess it's moving on with the with our I guess the next topic is the Beyonce country album. And how it has everyone in an uproar, including her mother. Her mother actually has to defend stating that Cowboys is not exclusive to white culture. Mm. And that's a, a little little shocking. That was per the Business Insider. So then, well, you know, just me being the person I am, I, I did say, well, what about the Buffalo Soldiers? Since we always have to answer for if we want to do a western or country music and then i even went further back and looked at country music since we you know have to answer for this and i would say i believe a lot of people have a lot of history to do and i'm not going to do your history for you today because google is free you know google is free i believe you should look but if you trace the we'll say uh, even before the Buffalo Soldiers, you had still black soldiers that were in the Western frontier that even did other things besides, you know, again, the Buffalo Soldiers, like the Blue Helmets and stuff, too. But I, I think that we have to look 
at all the music genres that Afro-Americans created. And sometimes I, I know this is a bittersweet thing for those who don't really want to give people their proper placement for where it is. But the only reason why I'm really speaking probably so directly to race today is we have two articles to me that were, I say, insidious in a way because to compare her to a peeing dog saying that she's trying to make her mark, you can't make a mark on something that truly is of the essence of your community. And then you can't jump into something saying, well, it's booming, so she wants in. When we already have artists that perform country music that are black, Aaron Neville, Darius Rucker, pretty sure there's more, but my main point is, is stop trying to make it about race when if it's just about the music, enjoy the music. So with that being said, I mean, I just to say, uh, we, we have to speak most of the time about who we are because of the attacks that we receive. So when you say things like black people can't be cowboys or black people can't do country music, I think you really don't know history well enough to speak on it. So you should probably not speak. You should probably just take notes. Just just take notes and, and listen. Let, let somebody inform you before you go jumping off the ledge, jumping right out the window to your death. And, and committing suicide, I would say, of your platform and all that, all because you want to make a headline. But it backfires when people start flooding your comments with you're not a truth teller. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I see one of the people I forgot. Oh, it was uh, Tina Turner that she made. See? Tina Turner, you know, I like I said, I, I don't want to have to read the letter of the law to people knowing that it is Black History Month for some of us <laughs> and recognized by, by others as well. But I, I think that when you do things where you say she's trying to mark her territory like a peeing dog or country music is booming so she wants in, we've already been in country music so there's nothing to want in. And you can't mark a territory for something that's already yours. Like, if that's the case, then what about all the people who perform hip-hop, R&B? And we're not talking about your Justin Timberlake NSYNC songs. We're talking about trying to go all the way over across the board, like John B. People like that. Eminem. Eminem. Like, I, I would really ha uh, hate to ruffle feathers by saying this, but when you do that saying cowboys country music and stuff like that that is what should be returned fired in then those people shouldn't be in those things so yeah okay, for one thing it, uh, that people need to understand too well i have a question do all black people live in the city no if you live in the country i married a man who lived it, who was country because <laughs> he came from georgia and he loved country music and all you see yes yeah so if that right there, if you live in a country, more than likely you like what? Country, country music. music. Yes. You live in a city, you mostly hear? Urban music. Yeah. I mean, that's just a known thing. And so when I met him, a lot of stuff that music I had never heard of, I fell in love with because I married this country. Yes, country person. This per and so. he was black. <laughs> yes. You see? So... Now, you know, I don't understand how unless you get people that we all separated where we living in the north and they living in the south where their country music is and we, that's not, that's not happening. Yes. And that right there is still trying to divide us even as a nation. Yes. You see, music shouldn't divide us. It should bring us together. It should. It should. And that's, that, that was my main point. Thank you for for uh, restating or, you know, reassuring, because that's my main point is if it's music, why aren't we focusing on the music? Why are we focusing on, just like if Eminem makes a song and, and I'm telling the truth for me, I listen to the song and I don't be like, well, he's a white guy, so I, I, he shouldn't be doing rap. I feel like mm -hmm. if your rap is good enough, it's up to par, doesn't matter if you're white, black, brown, green, whatever. It's just, I listen for the content. So when we jump on, if she does Beyonce being the she, if she does country music, it, it's an immediate attack at her race. And people will make it look like, well, Beyonce's trying to get into that because of, you see, yes. when it's not, music is music. And I feel like this, personally, if there's music that I listen to and I don't like it, I just don't listen to it no more. 
I don't have to knock the artist or whatever else. That's just not my cup of tea. Yes. Yeah, and I, I agree because I look at, and this isn't going to be the same as uh, as people going to country music, but people like, even though no, R. Kelly isn't exactly the greatest to bring up right now, but even him and Al Green, how many times did they go from making R&B to gospel music? Right. You know what I'm saying? Like I, and, uh, I say that because it, it, talent is talent. Like, you know, and even if that's something that you like doing, that's what you're going to do. Right. Even when I said Tina Turner. Tina Turner, she made different types of music in that. Yeah, she could perform with anybody. You also got Michael Jackson as a good example. Yes. Look how he played with Dirty Diana and stuff like that, but then he also played Beat It, and he put. you see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I was just saying, when you look at the artists actually going to a different genre, mm-hmm. you know, from gospel to R&B or from... R&B to hip hop to gospel to you know, I just was saying it's I think it's flawed in logic to feel like that you can't be a musician and do more than one music it, genre. It makes you more talented. It's sort of like even even though it might not be the same exact thing, but when we look at Prince, how Prince could play all those instruments. Right. Exactly, exactly, and that's it. That's it. all I'm saying is like your talent should be the first thing we looking at. We shouldn't be uh, looking at the race, you know, because like I said, just me personally, when I look at Afro-American music in, the, in this totality, we've welcomed everybody. And we and we haven't really put this up. Oh, well, you can't be a part of this because you're that. We've welcomed everybody. And it, now it starts to make me question, are we doing it at our detriment? If we can't even be a, a part of the music genres we created. Like, we created probably, I'd say, every uh, hot top 100 music genre that there is right now. From country to rock the rap, R&B, you know what I'm saying? You, there really isn't one genre that we haven't really, I'd say, really created and, and at a time dominated. And then as the time goes on, well, we keep getting pushed to the, we give you something else. And we're, I feel like we're at the point now, what else can we create? My thing is, if, for all the people who out, who's out there who's making it look like she's taking something from their, taking something from the white people as far as taking country for the the conservatives as they say or the people who have said it i've seen it on online where it says conservatives are upset or whatever but my point uh, behind all of that is really is, is showing but what do you think that you're losing if we're all now a country and trump is st- steadily saying we're supposed to make the country great it's all of us here in this country together. So what are you losing because you got another artist who's singing that song? Yes, exactly. What are you? What are you? Why are you feeling so threatened? Mm-hmm. Now, you don't hear us as far as black people say. Oh, we're getting ready now to every time a, a white person might sing a song that sounds like it because you got some people who actually uh, even sound. Yep, have, Sam Smith. Adele. Yeah, they even have the sound where if you didn't even see them, you would not even know. Mm-hmm. You see? I so, agree. And we don't get upset about that. Nope. And that's why I said we, we've been open. We've been open our head, you know. But when we do something where you could tell it ruffles them, like who you said, the, even that political side, where it's like, again, we're answering questions for being a cowboy and doing country music things that we were here for because in the 1800s 1700s that's the thing that people were cowboys well, that's right they you didn't know. you didn't see them riding no cars exactly so what did you ride a horse <laughs> cattle that's right <laughs> and matter of fact most of the time when it came down to those horses and that in the first place who you think was taking care of them yeah. You see, so it goes back with history, but I'm not even trying to bring all that part oh, I, up. I feel you. But my whole point is that by now we should be past all of that, where we should be able to live as people together. Uh, we're supposed to be United States. We need to be united. We yes. need to stop all of this. And if you don't like something, don't, don't listen, listen to, to it. it. Yeah. Don't the listen same to way, it. if you something on TV that you don't like, don't watch it. Yes. But you don't have to you have to get up there and make a big you know, broadcast about it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's true. And well, a lot of it, I think, have to do with, with ratings. I think it have to do with ratings, too, because if you get enough people com- saying that, then people won't watch it. It'll, it'll make a certain people just feel like, well, we won't, watch, we won't support that. So 
she won't get the the views and like how they said a lot of the radio stations aren't playing her music Mm -hmm. country stations and all that which is not fair because if you're an artist your stuff should be heard like anybody else's and let the people decide yes yeah that's what a good radio station does exactly and that's why you hear me saying let the music speak stop speaking about her race you know and even that like trying to confine us to either r&b and hip-hop is is a real disservice when again we created the genres so it shouldn't Mm -hmm. be nothing that we can't go to remember she had a super bowl a halftime performance mm-hmm. and remember the conservatives didn't like that right because so. remember she performed her song about what was it getting formation or something and back then it was a more it felt like a more pro-black song so they are always to me have that sentiment towards her when it's like she should still be able to do whatever she wants as far as a musician musicianship that's it music i don't care about uh, the look or whatever uh, if we talk about music then it should be played people should be able to hear if it's not good then let it fall down the charts right. but don't hinder it as far as well we're not going to play it we're not going to play it because it's beyond i think probably a lot of people probably have read the where she it said that she's made uh her three albums these last three albums that she's making or whatever like that is supposed to be bringing the real true culture of black people and so she's supposed to be even bringing a true culture of black people during, as far as country music and all those things like right. that. But each one of her albums is supposed to be bringing back our history. And then with this even being Black History Month. Yeah, I mean, because remember, that's what I'm stating. If we look at the creation of music, even just down to what you're saying, if they're saying that the banjo came from uh, West and Central Africa, then that would mean the ground roots for what type of music? country rock mm-hmm. rock and roll all of that would then start there so then we go into jazz it's still more string duke ellington uh what's my uh cold train and them like that you know so and i do i look at if we if we know that these instruments were privy to these people then you should look at the genre as being what probably created or influenced by these people so to now take that stance and say well country music is white I'm I'm a little taken back because it doesn't sound like we're the ones introducing race into the talk. Mm-hmm. It sounds like it's them. Remember, they love to say we're playing the race card. You love you guys love to play the race card. Well, what is what are we talking about now? Then we ain't talking about music. Mm-hmm. You know, I would think in a day like today, at this time, where you have maybe back in the day when you had slavery and stuff, where you didn't have people where you know they were even cohabiting or whatever black white whatever color and all of that you know i would see maybe back then you might feel like that but now and today when you look at america america is is a color place it's a full of colors it's not all white it's not all black it's you see so you would think that by now people would look at it and look and see that but we got Hispanics over here. We got and they make their music, and we got you know what I'm saying. I think and I, this is probably going to be a little far wide, but most of the time when I look at the the statements that's made, is more most people who even immigrate to this country come from an anti-black country. Mm-hmm. So then when I see the magnitude of people who will say. Well, country music is this and that and that. It comes, to me, it's already instilled in people to hate black people. So when we don't have, and I'm I'm sorry to go this way right now, but when we don't have unity across the board for people to understand music and musicianship before color, that's how we end up where we at now. And it's because when I, seriously, I'm a comment reader. When I read and I can see a person say, well, I'm Mexican, and we used to do this and this and this before, and it's like, where? <laughs> mm-hmm. Well, I'm I'm from the Middle East, and I never really seen black people do this and that. And it's like, so you again, you haven't done your history, but you you know enough to hate people to try and to me uh, turn down their light. And I, I'm sorry to say that, even if it ruffle people the wrong way. But that's what I see is the average immigrant that immigrates over here into this country is anti-black. Yeah, well, so, I think that even when we talk about uh, music or just like you heard me say with the guy's name, John Bologna, 
or something like that where it looked like baloney but uh when i talk about that he was actually his father was a slave master his father was white his mother was black and his father sent him to uh one of the best schools back then at the time over there in london he taught him how to to play uh classical music or whatever and that the guy was so good that he won all different kind of awards matter of fact they even said that mozart was so overtaken by him and that his talent and stuff like that 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 he even learned tried to learn some of the stuff from him and all of that later on of course all this stuff was because he had black and was stripped away from him in london or whatever but the point why i'm saying this is because we have people that even from way back then when we can talk about music Mm -hmm. Music has always been us, even before we really, even when we came here with a little, what do you think the hymns was that you heard that, that during slavery time? You think they was hip hop or do you think they, you see what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, but, that, yeah. but even his story is like, even you touched on elements, what I'm talking about, being able to turn down a person's light because of who they are. Mm -hmm. And that's the same thing we talking about with Beyonce right now, turning down her light. Eight out of 16 stations to report nationally having played her music. You're turning down the light on people. Yep. Sort and that's of like John Bologna there, what I was saying. Exactly. And that's what I mean, where it's like, until we get past that, and I, you can't then now, right now, say that this is black people playing, a, it's not. We're not playing a race card. We're just telling you, step out of the way, let the music be heard to many her muse, and if it's not that good, then it'll show. Then people will show it. Right. But if you don't play it, then we will never know. Because you keep in this home, like hiding something under a rock. Yeah. That's true. Mm -hmm. So I will land my plane. <laughs> and then saying that I just want the music to be able to speak. Uh, as, we've, as we have both spoken, we don't want it to be about race. But at these times where you see that you're saying that she can't do this cowboys can't be that you've made it about race so we just want the music to speak let the music speak let it play and we'll see where it drops at or where you know not drops i'm just saying drop as far as like you drop new music meaning that you created something new but uh, as well as me saying if it's not that good then the charts will let it but don't don't gatekeep it and keep it from being able to be you know listened to so yeah and on my closing i'll say that from Trump shoes to Beyonce's music, country music, Trump is white, Beyonce is black, but we're all American. <laughs> and so we look at even his shoes and that somewhere along the way we should be united. So she said Trump's doing sneakers, yeah. Beyonce's doing country music. Yeah, they're like the opposite. You yep. would think Trump would be doing the country and... Yep. And her and Jay-Z be doing the sneakers. Be making some shoes. So, and the, the way that the sneakers look. Don't don't get me started. <laughs> you already know. They have an urban look to me. So, but yep. Yeah, but I agree with that. So, so really what it's showing you that both of them is coming out of their comfort zones. Yep. Trying and, to, and we are all still American. Yep. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Well, I guess this concludes... I'd say we'll say from sneaker to country music today. We just want you to enjoy the show. Like, share, subscribe. You know, let us know what you think in the comments. Again, this is the Mom and I podcast, Best Buds. And I guess we will sign off then. Yes, thank you for listening. We ask that you like, share, and subscribe. Please, we need you to subscribe because we want to bring more content to you yep we love you <laughs> yep we love y'all appreciate it one love baby